All right, today I got a deck tech for you for MTG Arena. That's it. That's a travel swarm deck. It's not zombies. It's not mirror folk. Actually, running some vampires today. Let's get this going with the creature package. I'm gonna throw this first one in under the creatures. We got a one of Legion's Landing, which is one white for a one one legendary enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you create a 1-1 one, one white vampire creature token with lifelink. You attack with three or more creatures, you get to transform Legion's Landing into a down toe of the first fort, which has which taps for white mana and also has two and a white. You can tap to create a 1-1 one, one vampire creature token with lifelink. It's a very good mid to late game engine card. It's also a very good turn one play, so if we got a one of Vicious Conquistador, which is one black mana for a one two vampire soldier. When Vicious Conquistador attacks, each opponent loses one life, so on an empty board, he can get in for two points of damage, which is pretty good. We got a four of Dusk Legion Zealot, which is one of the black for a one one vampire soldier. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and lose a life. We got a four of Sky Marcher Blood Letter, which is Two and a black for a 2-2 two -two vampire soldier with fall with flying. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent loses one life, you gain one life. We got a two of Sanctum Seeker, which is two and two black for a 3-4 vampire knight. Whenever a vampire you control attacks, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. This is the main lord effect I'm running in the deck. It gives the deck reach, which the other swarm decks don't have. And it even can get in a ton of damage through a Settle the Wreckage. And a 3-4 four for 4 isn't too bad. It can, it can hold up a lot of early aggression. We got a 1 of Twilight Prophet, which is 2 and 2 black for a 2-4 with flying. It has Ascend, so if you have 10 or more permanents at any time while this is on the battlefield, you receive the City's Blessing. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have the city's blessing, reveal the top card of your library. Put that card in your hand. Each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is that creature or where X is that card's converted mana cost. So you flip a land, you deal no damage, but you drew an extra land. Gets it out of the way. You flip a four drop, a five drop, you get to drain for four or five points of damage, which can be huge. And it's just going to sit there and be a threat to peen. Two out of your three turns, because you're going to draw about one out of three lands in this deck. We got one of Alendra the Dusk Rose, a two white and a black for a one one legendary creature vampire knight. Whenever a another creature dies, any creature on the board, doesn't matter if it's yours or your opponent's, put a one one counter on Alendra the Dusk Rose. When Alendra dies, Create X 1 1 vampire creature tokens with lifelink. X is Alendra's power. Even if it's getting a buff from something else, even if you cast a, a buff spell on Alendra, you can still get the tokens if she dies. So if you make her a 4 or 5 power, even though it's going to die at end of turn or die during a jump attack, you still get 5 tokens instead of 1. So that can be huge. We got a 1 of Champion of Dusk, which is 3 and 2 black. When Champion Desk enters the battlefield, you draw X cards and lose X life for X is the number of vampires you control. It is a 4 4 vampire knight. This typically comes down, draws me 3 cards, 5 cards. Well, worst case scenario, it, it can draw a card off itself because it is an enter the battlefield trigger, so it does count itself. And finally, we got a 2 of Vampire Sovereign, which is 3 and 2 black for a 3 4. Flying, when it enters the battlefield, target opponent loses 3 life, and you gain 3 life. Good 3-4. A 4 toughness flyer is good at blocking anything, but it's Air Angel. Uh, <laughs> and it can really stabilize a board if your opponent's trying to get in with, like, 2-2 two -two mirror folks or 1-1 one -one flyers. Alright, let's move on to our instant and sorcery package. We got a 3 of Pride of Conquerors. 1 and a white. For an instant with Ascent. So if you have 10 more permits, you get a better bonus. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. If you have the City's Blessing, so those creatures get plus two, plus two until end of turn instead. 
We got a two of Moment of Craving, which is one of the black for an instant. Target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn, and you gain two life. Two of Golden Demise. When your opponent's going wide in front of you and you just need to clean up the board before you start deploying threats of your own. One and two black. For a sorcery with a send. All creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. If you have the city's blessing, instead, creatures your opponent's control get minus two, minus two. One of Settle the Wreckage, which is two and two white for an instant. Exile all attacking creatures target opponent control or target player controls. A player may search your library for any number of basic land cards, put those cards into the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle the library. You gotta have a way to deal with Carnage Tyrant. This is probably the best way in white to do it. It, pr it should probably be more than a one of as many people as running Carnage Tyrant in the single game leagues right now, or the single, the single game ladder right now. Carnage Tyrant is just a really good card in that current meta. But the one of Settle Record gives you an out to it. Not the only out, but it's the main out. We got a two of Raska's Contempt, which is two and two black for an instant. Exile target creature or planeswalker. You gain two life. And two of Call of the Feast. Two, a white and a black. Or a sorcery to create three one one white vampire creatures tokens with lifelink. This is a really important card in the deck. Uh, makes three bodies for four mana, which is pretty good. Works we really well with the Sanctum Seeker to get those extra life gain triggers. Helps set up City's Blessing so your Pride of Conquerors can go off way earlier than it otherwise would. Moving on to the artifacts and enchantments. We have no artifacts in this deck. I've already mentioned the Legion's Landing. So we'll go straight in. The dead weight. We got a three of dead weight. Enchant creature. Enchant creature gets minus two, minus two. Typically, you're using this to kill off land or elves on turn two before they can turn it into a five, four that you can't block until like turn five or six. We also got a two of seal away, which is one of the white for an enchantment with flash. Seal away enters the battlefield. Exile target tapped creature and opponent controls until seal away leaves the battlefield. Finally, a two of Radiant Destiny. Two and a white for an enchantment with Ascend. When Radiant Destiny enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. In this deck, Vampire. Creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one, plus one. And as long as you have the city's blessing, they also gain vigilance. So this just turns your one, one life linkers into two, two vigilant life linkers. Your two, two flyer into a three, three flyer or a four, five vigilant flyer. This gives you a lot of leeway being able to attack, defend. It shuts off your opponent's seal ways. It has a lot of versatility. Let's move along to the land package. We've got a one of Field of Ruin. Has a versatility of being able to take care of an opponent's flip disc, search for his Kanta, or other cards that might be problematic. Say they flipped over Legion's Landing themselves and you want to shut off their token production. We got a, only a two of Forsaken Sanctuary. There's a battlefield tap, taps for white or black. Main reason I'm only running a two of instead of four of is I want my cards like uh, Isolated Chapel to be better. Isolated Chapel, I'm running three, not four. That's mostly a concession to the fifth card problem that um, MTG Goldfish Saffron Olive puts up. I'm not going to craft the fourth one in case I open it, at least for a while. And because I... Filling the vault progress, like what, 1% or whatever a rare does, is not really worth it to waste a wild card on right now. But having a three of, I get to improve my deck's efficiency without having to worry about it. I'm only running two of the regular tap lands because I'm also, to make my isolated chapels better, I'm running a four of Evolving Wilds. It just lets me search my deck for any basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and shuffle my library. We also have five planes, seven swamps, and two of Memorial of Folly. Memorial of Folly actually has proven to be a really good card. I don't know if I want to go more than two of because the deck already has six other tap lands, and that seems to be a lot of the deck that wants to be able to um, curve out a little bit better than what it's doing. But the Memorial of Folly has an activated ability. You can 
it either taps for a black, or you can spend two of the black, sack it, and return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Buys back your Sanctum Seeker so you can get in that final attack and just close the game out. Very pivotal card in the late game of this deck just to make sure you have the gas to finish it off. Last the deck. Deck list will be posted in the description below. There will be gameplay video going up of this. I just got to get it edited. Thanks for watching the video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing. You can follow me on Twitter at GeekLukeG. This is Couch Troll Brewing.